Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we are going to be creating, uh, well we're going to be monetizing the simulator. We're going to be monetizing our game. So we're going to be adding a purchase cash to a developer product and we'll go into more detail about that later. And we'll also be doing a cash counter so that uh, on your screen there's a GUI and it says the amount of cash you have on the side of your screen. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so first of all, we want to start off by coming down into our uh, games uh, down here in the create tab, create tab, and we want to come down to our game that we are editing. And then now we want to come down, we want to click on the image, and then now we want to come down to developer products, products, and then this is basically so. Well, basically, developer products are. Uh, like a game pass where you can buy them for real life uh, for real robux and um, they will be uh, you can buy them more than once that's what developer product is basically it's a game pass that you can buy more than once and we we, we want to be using these a lot more because they can uh, give you more income a lot more uh, a lot better like you get a lot more income from developer uh, developer products um, because people can buy it constantly over and over again and one of the best ways of doing uh, the best developer products types of developer products are buying cash buying money and then later on if you wanted to you could buy the exact same amount of uh, money for the same price and everything like that and you can just buy it o over and over again um, and then I I saw, I saw a question in one of my comments saying that um, how do I actually cash out uh, this? Like, how do I actually get the Robux from my games? So basically, when you create a developer product or when you create a game pass, when somebody buys it, it will go through, um, it will basically, it will go into whatever holds the gr uh, game. So if it's a group, it will go into the group. And then through the group, you can cash that. Uh, you can uh, transfer the Robux, the group funds from the group to yourself. Or if you own the game, when somebody buys it, you'll notice that you have something in your inbox saying "pending Robux," and in that section, that is where um, you can see uh, that somebody's bought your developer product, uh, and that's that. Yeah. So basically, it'll it will show up inside of that. Um, but anyway, um, we want to come down here and click create new. And then now we can change the options for our developer product. So I'm going to add 1000 cash to the person that um, has my developer product. I'm going to say gives uh, in the description, I'm going to go gives you uh, 1000 cash, whatever. Um, and then price in Robux, you can do whatever. I'm just going to pick 25. And also, this drop down list is where I've used it from my old uh, games. So <laughs> don't worry about that. But you might need to type it in manually, but it's okay. So I'm going to do 25 Robux for that. And I'm going to click create. And you can choose an image. I'm not going to actually. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to add an image in. Oh, well, okay. Actually, I'm going to add an image in and I'm going to add my. Uh, I'm going to add into my um, YouTube logo. My, uh, yeah, so my YouTube logo. So let's click create. And then now we have the developer product. And then what you want to, uh, and then once you want to do, when you ha once you have the developer product, is you want to come down here to the ID and you want to copy this ID. Just like this. Now come back over to Roblox Studio, and we can start scripting uh, into what we we can start scripting um, the actual game game, uh, the actual system. So first of all, we're going to be adding it through a GUI. So I'm going to add a new um, screen GUI. And I'm going to name it Main. So this is where I'm going to put all of the main uh, main parts of the uh, main screen GUI, so main things, main GUIs, basically. Um, and then I'm going to add in to this, I'm going to add a text button. Now we want to use a text button because we can add text to it and then we can also click it and uh, it'll run a function from when you click it or whatever you script after it. Guys, I will be back once I've edited mine properly. Okay, cool. So now that you have your button and you've designed it how you want, we can actually start scripting the button. So what I'm going to do inside of this button is I'm going to name this button plus cash. 
um, or something like that, but I'm gonna name it plus cache. Uh, just so we know what it does and then we want to add a local script inside of it and so basically what we're going to be doing inside of this um inside of this button is we're going to make it so that when you click the button it's going to prompt you with a purchase for this um, developer product now basically what that means if you didn't know what that is if you've ever been in a roblox game and you go to buy something and you have that big um, you have that pop-up GUI uh, that says do you want to buy this and you click buy now and then it will purchase it um, that's basically a prompt purchase. So we're going to want to prompt that on the player. So um, first of all, we're going to want to get the marketplace service. So I'm going to do, um, let's do local MPS. So marketplace service equals game colon get service. So we want to get the service and then we want to get marketplace service, just like this. And then now we want to um, grab the ID. So we want to create a variable for the ID. So let's do this and let's paste this in there. So just the ID that you copied from the developer product and you want to paste it there. And then now we want to get the player. So let's do local uh, player equals local player. And then now we want to detect, uh, now that we have the variables done, we want to detect whether the person clicks uh, or not. So let's do, uh, clicks the button. So we want to do script.parent. So we're grabbing the button and then we want to do mouse button one click. So on an event and we want to add a function to this. And then now we are saying when, uh, when, our, when the parent, so the button is clicked with the mouse button one, connect to that and run a function through it. So now, I'll play this function. So now we want to um, do MPS and we want to do prompt, prompt product purchase. Oh, we want to do prompt product. We don't want to do game pass because that would be uh, prompting a game pass. We want to do prompt prod uh, product, can't talk today. Um, and then we want to prompt this to the player with the ID. And then now you should see that when I hop into the game, you should see that um, when I click uh, this, I get this pop-up GUI uh, on my screen. I get the prompt purchase GUI on my screen and then I can click buy now. But this, right now, as you can see, when I click purchase, when I actually buy it, you can see it's done nothing. I have nothing, nothing's happened, it's just taken my Robux. And also, one cool thing about this is that when you're in Roblox Studio, as you can see here, it says this is a test purchase, your account will not be charged. Basically, you can test out your game passes without losing any Robux. So that's, in that's great, that's incredible. So anyway, now we need to start scripting uh, the actual system that detects it, uh, that detects the purchases. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a server script inside of server script services. So I'm going to insert a script here, and then we want to grab this one and we want to name it, uh, I'm gonna name it cash shop. And then now, just so we know what it is, and then now we want to basically detect whether this per, uh, this is purchased. So the way I'm that I'm going to be doing is I'm saying um, if a developer pro if a developer product is bought and it has the ID of this, then do this, and that's basically what I'm going to be doing. So, uh, yeah, so we want to get the local, uh, we want to get the marketplace service again. So let's do the same thing by getting the service and we want to get marketplace service. And then now we want to do MPS dot process receipt, uh, receipt, I can't talk. <laughs> and then we want to um, make that equivalent to a function. Uh, and then we want to get this receipt info from that. So if I can actually spell, and then now we want to come ahead and um, do if the receipt info, so if the uh, if the uh, developer product is uh, has the product ID, so 
yeah, as the product ID is equivalent to this then. So if it has the ID um, of of the, um, well, yeah, if it has the ID, the game pass ID that we copied from the developer product, the developer product ID, sorry, we want to uh, now set a variable for the local player. So, uh, and then get their uh, player by user ID. And then we want to um, add that to the player. Uh, we want to get the receipt info to the player's uh, ID. So basically what we want to do is do this. So I'm going to do local player equals game dot players uh, colon get player by user ID and then we want to do receipt info dot player ID. So we want to first, well, wait, basically we want to detect if, it, if that's the player. So we want to basically grab the player um, who's bought the uh, receipt. So basically getting the game pass, uh, getting the developer product, sorry. And we're saying the one that has been bought, let's get the player's ID uh, who bought it. And then we want to get the player uh, from that user ID. And then now that's inside that variable. So now we can reference player and then since this is a server script, we can't do game dot, uh, game dot players dot local player, like I said in one of the last episodes. So now we basically brought it from the game pass purchase, uh, the developer product purchase. I don't know why I keep saying game pass. If I ever say game pass, I basically mean uh, developer product right now in this episode. So now we want to do player dot leader stats. So basically grabbing their leader stats folder and we want to change their cash value uh, to, um, we will want to plus 1000 to it. But if you remember from like a, a couple of uh, old videos, you can't add the plus here. If you notice, see it reds out, it um, gives a red line. So we need to do it again. So we need to repeat it. So we need to do player uh, dot leader stats dot cash dot cash dot value and then we want to do plus 1000 or whatever you want to be adding on and then now we want to use a return function i may be doing another video on that but for now uh not a function but uh we i may be doing another video on that but i'm not going to go over much detail in it right now but anyway, now we want to use an enum just like we had before um, in the last episode. Um, not the last episode, but the last video that I did, if you guys remember from that, um, with the um, animation, playing on an a playing an animation when you click your key on your keyboard. Uh, but anyway, we want to do enum and then we want to do product, purchase de uh, decision, I can't say the word. And then we want to do purchase granted. And then now, this whole script here is basically saying if, um, so when there is a, uh, when somebody buys a game pass, if that game pass is, um, well, we want to grab the game pass, uh, we want to grab the, uh, if somebody, uh, buys a developer product, we want to grab that developer product. And then if the developer products ID is this, then we want to get the player from the, uh, we want to get the player from the uh, developer product, uh, and then we want to grab the uh, developer, the the person who bought the developer product, and then we want to get their player from that ID the, or the person. So it's complicated, but basically this works. So I just noticed that I uh, I missed the I the I missed the R in product. Uh, so you you may want to check that if you are following me exactly. But anyway, now we can test this out and it should be working perfectly fine. So let's head down here, click the plus 1000 cash. It prompts us with the purchase and we click buy now. And as you can see over there, we got plus 1000 cash. So we got plus 1000 cash and now that works. And as you can see, I can click on this with the weight. And from last video, this now works as well perfectly and works the perfect. Uh, works the exact same. So now we can start working on the um, the cash counter. So saying how much cash we have. So let's insert a, uh, I'm gonna insert a text label. So a text box, by the way, you can edit. So we wanna use a text label because then you can't click it, uh, click on it and edit it.
Okay, so guys, now I'm going to do a little uh, cut uh, for when I'm going to do all mine. So I'm going to do all the properties of mine. So give me a second, and you guys can do yours. Uh, just edit it to how you'd like. Okay, so now guys, I've just positioned mine uh, and my cash counter, and now I can edit it. So now let's insert a local script when you're ready. And we can start writing now. First of all, I'm going to start off by um, setting some variables and um, we want to do a lot of um, waiting for a child uh, with the leader stats because uh, we are going to be running this as soon as a player joins into the game and we want to be, uh, we want it to be loading straight away and we don't want it to break the leader stats. We don't want it to break the leader stats. So basically, let's make a variable for this leader stats and I'm going to bring it through from the player. So let's go to, let's do game.players.localPlayer. And then now from this, we want to do a whole bunch of waiting for a child. Wait for a child. And then we want to wait for leader stats. And then now we want to do the same thing. And we want to wait uh, for a child. And we want to wait for cash. And then we want to, um, yeah, so that, that should be good right there. And then now we want to get the text. So let's do um, the set a variable and let's do script.parent. Oh, script.parent, just like that. And then now we want to do text dot text. And then we want to do equals and let's do cash. Uh, and then space dot dot leader stats dot value. So basically what we are saying is we are saying the text of this. So as you can see right now, I've got cash colon, uh, colon. So we're basically saying we want the text to be cash colon colon, the leader stats value. Uh, and dot dot means uh, add to the string, basically add to the text. Um, and the space is because if I was to not have the space there, it would be joined straight up there and I'd, uh, it would be joined on and I, I don't want that. So basically now once we've done this, we want to wait until it's updated because right now if we join to the game, we'll probably uh, get either zero or we'll get the amount of cash that we have. And then when we click, it, will, it won't update basically. So we wanna um, detect whether it's updating or not. So let's get to the leader stats and let's do get property changed. So basically saying if a property has changed so if something has changed, uh, signal, and the value has, uh, if the value has changed, then run this function. So we got to connect, and we got to do function. And just like this, now we want to do the same thing by doing text dot text equals cash colon, uh, oops, uh, dot dot leader stats dot value. And then now we're basically saying uh, when there's an updated, so when it has it updated or when something changes, so uh, for instance, when you click and you get a plus two cash, we want to do it again. So we want to run it again so that it will project, it will print the new value, so the new amount. So now when we hop into the game, you should see there 146 cash and then down here, 146 cash. And then when I click with my weights, you should see, there you go. You see it's updating every time it updates and that is perfectly what we want. And then also we can go down here and click plus cash, plus a thousand cash. And then we can hit this, boom. And as you can see, now we have 1000 cash up here, uh, plus 1000 cash up here. And we have an extra 1000 cash down here project, uh, just showing the amount that we have up here. And then you guys can change this however you'd like. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something new. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.